Welcome to another episode of OS First Timer. In this episode, you're going to be trying out SkyOS build 6947 from August 3rd, 2008. In 1996, a guy at the university called Robert Cellini began to work with his friends to create an operating system as a hobby. Originally, in 1996, it was just a small bootloader, but by 2004, it had gained quite a bit of popularity and was a fully-fledged operating system. However, by this point, most of his friends were no longer working on SkyOS. SkyOS is not based on Linux, Unix, Minix, Windows, Mac, BOS, or any other operating systems. It and its graphical interface known as SkyGI was written from scratch. However, it did use the Crystal Icon Pack used in KDE. It was designed to be a closed source commercial operating system with the goal of being the easiest to use desktop operating system for the average user. We'll people, see. people who pre bought SkyOS in preparation for its hopeful future release were given access to beta versions of the operating system through its development. In 2009, development was halted, so Robert could decide if he wanted to make SkyOS open source, free, or just stop its development entirely. In March 2013, the website went offline due to its domain name expiring. In September 2013, the website went back online and allowed anyone from the public to download SkyOS build 6947 from August 3rd, 2008. Now you're going to try out that publicly released beta version of SkyOS. I've been waiting long enough. <laughs> So when you first look at SkyOS, what is your initial impressions of it? Like I'm looking at a car bonnet and that's the car logo. That's what it looks like to me. Well the funny thing is this is actually the car bonnet background of SkyOS. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, so I'm surprised you picked that up. I've never seen a logo like that for a car. It's not Australian obviously. No, no, that's not an actual real logo for a car. That's actually the SkyOS logo. Oh, okay. So, oh, that's very clever. It does look like a car bonnet. That's their SkyOS logo. Oh, without right, yeah. like it being on a bonnet. Okay. Yeah. Well, it looks pretty good there, actually. It looks like it's a very top quality, expensive operating system, actually. Very clean. It looks like a Windows based on the icons yep. there. But yeah. Linux also has icons when you think about it, and Mac. I um, know, but to me, I get an impression of Windows when I look at this. Are those icons. Okay. What time is it? 10.02. Except it's not really. <laughs> well, the only reason it's changed is because I am using this in a virtual machine and that's yeah. the time last night when I was actually setting it up. Yeah, we're actually 11.04 now. Okay. <laughs> so your next task is to write, save, open and delete a text document. Okay. Now, storage, I'm assuming perhaps documents might be there. Now note that this is a file browser. Okay, so it'll search. I don't really have any documents there, so yep. I'm going to close it. And How I'll... did you know that was closed? It wasn't an X. I know it wasn't, but it was slightly red. Oh, okay. And I assume that that would be closed. I'm wondering if there's a menu here. Oh, there is. Now, That's can I good. just say, what do you feel like, without me saying anything about this menu, how do you feel about I like the... it centred, actually. Okay. That's pretty... Instead so of having like a the menu top, this... there, that's pretty good. This thing is called the panel. You yeah. couldn't get a name more unoriginal because these things in computers are actually called panels. The oh, start okay. menu in Windows is actually a panel, well, you know which what? is labelled the start menu. This is that's, just called the panel. That's not so bad because I like when things are labelled with what they actually are. Okay. I don't like it when they disguise things with all these weird names that you wouldn't even have a clue what they are. That's good. So you like the panel? Yeah, it's fine. Um, now, document. Well, their programs, their settings, help, run, find. I can't find documents. Where would the documents be? Oh, wait a sec. Office. Here we are. But PDF viewer people, does that seem like a Word document thing? Some kind of a text no, program? No, it doesn't. But here they're calling it Office, which is very misleading because you'd assume then you would go into Office type. 
software like Word documents. Yep. And yet I've gone into it and I can either go into people or PDF. Go format. into people. <laughs> and to me, that's not opening a Word document. Okay. So, don't like that so You far. don't like going into people? No. Okay. Software store. Well, that will store it after I've created it. But where is the thing to create? No. Just processing. Wait I'll a second. Wait, just to tell you software store is where you'd buy it's kind of like an ubuntu app store kind of oh, thing that's where you'd buy store, apps. as in not yeah, in store. storage yeah. but as in sto okay. store yeah. shop shop yeah. software shop yeah okay so text processing now there's a skypad or strictly notes sticky think, notes oh sticky notes i think i'll just choose sticky notes that'll do but do you think this is going to save as a document no i don't or actually i think it's going to stay as I think a desktop little stay. sticky note okay well let's go back into this but don't you think text processing is a good enough category for what you're going to do? Mm, Office to me is something I'm more used to. Okay. And that's where I would have expected it to be. Okay, so I'm in a Skypad now, whatever a Skypad is. It's like a, you know, notepad, but because it's a SkyOS, it's a Skypad. Oh, okay. When you think about Windows, you're going into accessories, then WordPad, if Office isn't installed. How do I actually type this? I'm clicking on there. So there's actually no paper. You need to put some paper oh, there. You're kidding me that's just ridiculous so go file oh. and how do you think about more open new yeah see this is called oh, new and here's me. your paper here okay I didn't like that because you'd assume if you're going to go into word processing or text processing whatever they call it you'd want paper mm. why would you have to get paper just put it there yeah so you think it should <laughs> automatically put a new sheet there rather than you having to say hey new sheet yes. or hey open um, it should automatically go into new yeah but, but not then open. if you don't want yeah, new, you, go open. into... Yeah, what's the point of having nothing? Yeah, what's the point of having nothing? Because if you go straight into new, mm. then, you know, 50% of the time you might be going into a new yeah. document. So that, that saves you a step. Yeah. Whereas if you want to open a document that's already created, well, fine, that's your step. Okay. Okay, so... As you can see, there's no spare... Spell... <laughs> can't even speak grammar clearly right. There's no spell check. Oh, there isn't. Okay, well, that was a good check for spell check. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to save it now, and I'm going to save it as... Where do you want it to be? Um, I don't know. Out of, out of devices, places, or query, where would you think a good places? place? Places. Okay, go. You'd put it in a place, yep. obviously. Do you think there's a way you could choose, like, a different What place? documents? Aren't there documents in this thing? I'll give you a clue. These have pluses next to them. Oh, okay, so then... You Places, where do you want to put it? In your home, your music, or your video? Well, it's not a music or video, so it's going to have to be in the home. So when you actually click on each of these, one click is enough, right? Mm. See how it's in home, music, see how that's changing yep. there? Um, by default, it looked like it was actually already in home for okay. you. So if you made a document here, documents, that would be fine. So what do you want to save it as? Where do you save it? Well, I'm assuming you put a file name. Yep. So document actually no skydoc save now i'm assuming it's saved somewhere yep. so in skydoc oh, i want to get rid of this sticky thing in process oh you knew how to do it so you actually have to I go did. up to the top now how did you know that that would actually store all the programs in it well, that I, open? Had, I had a feeling because it had the even though the sticky yeah, dock was, was down there. here it had a little panel thing next to the panel so i yeah. just thought that would yeah be and it was labeled way. sticky note and you right clicked yeah. in it and closed. in process i thought it was going to just end the whole thing no now I've got to open it. Okay, okay, so can you find where it is in a file browser type thing is how you would access it. So remember where you saved it? Yeah, home. Home, yeah. Where is home? Devices, places? Is, ho is your oh, home places. a device, a place, or a no, query? No, it's in place. Yep. Home, hero. There One we go. That's all that's necessary. Skydoc. Yep. I'm in it. Okay. Oh. Please select the application you want to open Skydoc with. Oh, this is something that really irritates me is when you need an application. Why doesn't it just, can't it just be smart enough to know what it, it needs to open the document with? Well, have a look. Select the right one from here. Which, what, what, what is the right one? It's... I wouldn't have a clue. What did you just Skypad? open it? Yep, that. Let's see if it now opens it in Skypad again. So quit that. Okay and see if now it's learnt, see if it's learnt. Windows would learn, but no, this hasn't learnt. This hasn't learnt. Yeah, well, look, computers are supposed to be so smart and everything. Why can't they know 
what application to open it with. Wouldn't that be great if somebody could create an operating system or even fix the current operating systems so that instead of you having to select Windows, Linux and Mac pretty much do that. Usually with Windows it knows and if it's a file it doesn't know it'll say okay what do you want to open it with and then you can actually click set this as a default program to open these types of files with in future. Well I just think that a computer should know within its own repertoire here what to open a yep. file with. So you could so probably set it in some like advanced settings or something but automatically it's not learning it's not thinking you just opened it with this now well, let's no, I, I don't it like expect that. it to learn I expect it to know initially <laughs> so okay. anyway that's that's to me a, a downfall okay so. so you're not thinking how how do you feel about his goal of making this the easiest desktop operating to use well, for normal get rid users of, get rid of these steps and it will will be an easier operating mm. system but I mean having to initially what I said go straight into a you know a new document that saves the step because yep. 50% of the time you might be open opening up a new document and the times when you're not well fine then take that extra step with this the computer should be if it's so simple to use then it should know Mm. what to open its own you know documents with save now, you the hassle okay. so that when you click you want to go into that particular document boom the computer then <laughs> selects the correct application to be able to open it just before you continue I want you to try out minimize and maximize first well, of all move it around the screen well okay yep. it does what, what I'm you expecting think, yep. it to do so how would you maximize which one maximize, maximize would be that yep. and I'm assuming minimize would be that yeah yep. and that puts it in the taskbar do you like this kind of taskbar well it's not the taskbar it's the panel yeah it's what it's called so you think how it shows all your programs up there is it's good yeah it's fine I've got no problem with that and in fact centering it is for some reason <laughs> unknown reason I just I think it looks good in the middle. Okay, it sort of sets it apart from okay. you know always beginning to the left of the screen. Okay, so can you now delete that? Yeah, I'm assuming that I, I'm assuming that I right click it and then just go delete. And yes, I am sure. I wouldn't have selected that if I wasn't sure. It's selecting it by accident in case you accidentally wanted to rename it and then boom, it's gone. You know. But I'm sure it wouldn't it be in the recycle bin and you could just get it out again if you did accidentally. I don't know if there's a recycle bin here. Well, I just think that would good, be good because it's annoying when you're asked, are you sure? I mean, yes, I am sure. I wouldn't have clicked it if I wasn't sure. But then if, say, on the 1% of time that you do make a mistake, yeah. then it's in the recycle bin and you can just grab it out. Okay. And the other 99% of the time when you are sure that you want to do it, then by getting rid of that, are you sure, you're making it simpler to use. You're making it less steps. You're making it faster. Okay. That's my argument anyway. Um, before we continue, this is just a really old version of Sky OS from its early days. It looks a lot different now, doesn't it? It does look very See, different. That was kind of like a little quick launch thing there and that's all your programs on the side. Yeah calculator and everything yeah do you think it looks better than that now it does it does look more modern okay. now, I will admit and even those colors are quite um old. Yeah. I said initially I like that background and this was it still in an early stage but a little bit later see yeah and it looked a bit like Windows because at the bottom you can see it says menu and it's got a taskbar at the yeah. bottom yeah it does look very like Windows even has the blue background next now can you calculate 28,000 divided by 13 utilities calculator there we go and it had a picture of a calculator which was good yes and it was like called that. calculator and it's this is a simple calc great mm. what was the um number 27,000 divided by 13 um, divided by there we go 2076.923 yeah done now the panel is telling you the time and the weather, although it's not connected to the internet, so it can't really show you the weather. Can you now make it show something new, like something else there? Add something to it, so it's showing add more features. To these. Yeah, add more features to it. Not programming them, but like from a little checklist kind of thing. How would you add more features to it? So you've right-clicked it. Oh, okay. And you can see stuff. So uh, CPU now usage I've put CPU. is using So 3%. what I did was I right clicked up there. Yeah, or anywhere on it you can select. Okay. And you can do stuff like um, system uptime. Free memory. Okay, Free memory. Well, it's let's just... Query. That's where you can type in for files and stuff instead of oh, typing search. in it's fast. Yeah, okay, search. search bar. And system uptime, click that. That tells you how long the computer's been on for. So you can see I've been preparing for it for a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five hours and 58 minutes. <laughs> 
Not no. exactly that long, but I'd, I'd left it on and walked away. <laughs> so can you now change the desktop background? Well, I'm going to right click, properties, background, select image. Perfect. All logical. Now what image do you want? Well, I can't see anything right now. Oh, you have to actually go over it. Wouldn't it be good if you just put the cursor over it and as you moved it down it just initially showed the picture without having to click that One way, way if you don't want to click, you can use the arrow key and go down like this. Oh, so you can. So that is quicker. Okay, so you Now, can. that's all it has there, but these are just like little icons and that's this is what I don't like. If you click upper folder, then you go to background, then you've got images and then you've got all these fantastic, look at this, great images you can use. See? And that was a car one, see? I car. actually don't mind this one, but I will select another one. What about that one? Yeah, okay. And then how would you open it? There we go, and then that sets that as a background. Okay. Okay. Last of all, have a quick explore, then turn it off. Okay. Well, this is storage. There's so not much in there. Nothing really in there. System manager. There you can actually change the theme, so you can have like different coloured windows and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's, it's only got two options, click on it. Which one? Themes. Themes. Now see it's got two themes, it's got this one which is what you're using and it's also got royal blue. Yeah. Now this is something a little bit silly I think about this. If you click change the theme, apply. Did you notice it changed the theme at all? No. Technically, this is supposed to be blue and yeah, yeah. green and but stuff. It hasn't. It hasn't changed, but you watch anything new that you open. Let's say you open Firefox now by clicking that. Anything new now has that royal theme. Oh, so I that see. blue theme. And oh. look at that. So it doesn't actually <laughs> change the previous things. Yeah, so if you now logged in and out, oh, then that would, would be then. all blue. And see how this is open? If you close it, then get back into it, now it's blue. Oh, you okay. See? That looks two windows to me now with that blue. Yeah, because it looks like it's the exact thing. Yeah. Have a little look at the other programs it's got and then maybe help. API documentation, don't know what that is. Image editing games. Entertainment demo, OpenGL. Airstrike, Egg Chess, Foo Billard. I want to do Foo Billard. Oh, that would be a billard, like a balls. Oh, right. So if you... I'm not sure how you're supposed to do it. You can turn the table around with the arrow keys. But you can't hit the balls. Oh, there we go. I okay. press spacebar. Oh, so you turn and then you press spacebar at the angle you want it to hit the ball. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, that so that's that. that yeah. Okay, it's even got to... Minesweeper, yeah. Detector and Sky Tetris. Image editing. Blender 3D is making 3D models and stuff. Okay. You've got an image editor. You've got Firefox as a web browser. And then the software store. Are but they expensive? The pro Well, the issue is there's no internet because this is a virtual okay. machine, but there is a few things in the store. But not much, though, from memory. Okay, Bash. What's Bash that? is just a terminal. Okay, I don't need any in. terminals. Now, have a little look at the help and tell me if you think it looks helpful. Like, if you were using this for the first time, and then you can turn the computer off. Does this look like helpful welcome and then first steps and telling you how to use it? Like, let's say, okay, you wanted to know how to use this, how would you do that? So, um, first steps. So, first steps and it says please select a subtopic. So, you've got to go plus and then using the thing, panel. see panel. And then this tells you, oh, the panel. And you can make it bigger. Tricks. So, there's actually tricks to using this panel. Is it that hard, really, that you need tricks to use it? If you want to force a program to close, click a program with your right mouse button on the panel and click end process, just like what you did. <laughs> yeah. Show the desktop. Right click the panel clock area and left click show desktop to minimize all open windows at once. So, it's giving you little things. And see, and logging off and shutting down, using the GUI and see, it's showing you all the buttons. And see, it tells you what each button is. The red one is for closing windows. The blue one is for maximizing it, or if it is already maximized, for making it smaller again. The yellow one is for minimizing the window to the Sky OS button. If yeah. an application contains help, there'll be an additional green button and you can do help. See how it shows you everything, mm, your personal mm. files. and That's good. Do you think that's a good helpful? It's good and helpful, but if it was so simple to use, you technically shouldn't need that. Well, you kind of knew some of those things well, without well, I did. doing I it. Did. Yeah. I did. But that's for people like, you know, it's a backup. Now can you turn off the computer? Yes, I can. I'll click that <clears throat> and just shut down. That's great. Yes, I am sure I want to shut down. Now what do you think of Sky OS? I liked the home page. I liked the way it was set out. And I did even like the fact that the panel was centered there. That's great. Yeah. And it did it did actually look very simplistic to use. But when I did open a document, I expect to open a document in Office. 
this as mm. opposed to Skypad. If it wants to appear simplistic, then get rid of some steps. You know, when you go to open a document, it's go straight into the new so that, you know, however many times you want to open a new document, then great, you've saved a step. And if you do want to open an existing document, then fine, go in, you know, take that next step. But remember in Windows, you keep complaining about it being Office. In Windows XP, and you don't have Office installed because you pay for Office, that's an mm. extensional thing, you'd have to go start Accessories WordPad. Do you think going in here, Start Programs Text Processing Skypad was better than Accessories? Do you think a notepad or a wordpad should be under accessories well i guess also you can customize processing. it and then you can even make an icon of it if you want yeah to on, on the you. desktop so you could yeah. customize it to suit you could probably just yeah drag it from there to the desktop straight from the menu next. yeah yeah it's all right i think it's actually pretty good for a person that's just one pretty much one person one and person some that's gone and friends, created yeah, it over I, so much time it's, yeah it's not bad would you say it could compete with windows or mac would you say it's Appearance-wise, how is it appearance-wise appearance to compare to Windows wise, or Mac? It reminds me more of Windows and Mac. Yeah. Especially when you choose the blue theme. Yep. Um, but how compatible is it? Oh, you can't run Windows, Mac, yeah. or the, yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can port things over from other operating systems and yeah. kind of make their code for this one, but compatibility is a pretty big thing. So yeah. you'd need it to be compatible. But I think it's a pretty good attempt from somebody, you know, mm. who's just created an operating so system. As a hobby in university. As a hobby. Great. Do you think it looks better than Windows XP in its default state? It does actually. It actually looks more modern. Okay. It's looked around like what you just saw since about mm. 2004. So about three years after XP was made. It, it does. It looks more modern. I prefer the look of this, but obviously I prefer how to use Windows XP. It looked nice and clean, you know, well set out and everything, but I think there are a few little things that could improve it yep. and compatibility wise I really think it needs to be compatible because that is a pretty big but you thing. can't just make something compatible it's like Linux people saying let's just make everything compatible with Windows and Mac compatible on Linux you know you can't well, why not why not <laughs> yeah. have one then allowed to it's copy it's compatible copy. with everything I mean wouldn't that be an operating there, well system? there is an operating system like that under development although I haven't heard much about them for a while um, well, there should be FinOS or something FinOS Feno well, OS, I tell it you, runs every single program for every operating well, system. Well, I think it's about time that we had an operating system which was compatible with absolutely everything. Will, will I be trying that next? FenOS or whatever it's called isn't available yet, I'm sorry. Oh, well, we'll just have to wait for it then. Okay. But I'd like to try that out. Okay, see you next time. Bye.